We are now under a month away from Halloween Horror Nights 33 beginning, those gates opening, and the fog flooding the streets of Universal Studios Florida. And because we're getting so close to the event, updates are coming in left and right. Scare Zone construction progress is well underway when it comes to the Orlando event. We have some brand new props for a good chunk of the Scare Zones coming to this year's event. We have a new store that brings back an old favorite with some fun Easter eggs. We have a tease as to what could be coming for the HHN Tribute Store this year. And we have some interesting updates when it comes to the Unmasking the Horror Tour for this year. As you might be able to tell, there is a lot to talk about right now, so I want to waste no more time and jump right into another round of HHN updates. Now to get things started here, I did want to talk about the most recent construction updates when it comes to HHN Orlando. Most, if not all, of the scare zones now have some themed props indicating what we could be seeing in those scare zones. Starting off in the front entrance area, which is set to house the Duality of Fear scare zone, we don't have any set pieces out quite yet, but we do have the initial truss structure for the Halloween Horror Nights neon sign. This thing has been around for quite a while, it was most recently brought back for HHN 30 and has kind of stuck around since. It's become kind of a staple of the event welcoming you in as you go into that first scare zone. And as you can see here, we have this truss structure around the same spot that it was last year with the same platform on the top that they had last year for Dr. Oddfellow to perform the opening ceremonies. So I would not be surprised at all if Sinister and Surreal go on top of that structure and perform the opening ceremonies for this year. Moving over to the New York area, we have quite a few updates from the last time I covered this. Last time I talked about a stage going up that looks like the one seen in the Torture Fair concept art, and it seems like with some additional set dressing that has appeared in the park recently, we can confirm that the Torture Fair is going to be located in New York. The stage has been outfitted with some brick and wood theming, a locked up iron Maiden, which is pretty similar to what we saw in the concept art, and a banner that reads Ye Old Torture Fair 2024. We also got the appearance of a booth farther along down the street that is very reminiscent to the ones we saw in Vamp 69 Summer of Blood. So I expect them to serve a similar purpose, housing a scare actor to perform a little scare moment, and I expect we'll see some more of these creeping up in the next few weeks. Very interesting stuff here. I really am excited to see what they do with the Torture Fair, and I'm sure we'll learn a bit more in the coming weeks about how this scare zone is going to function. I'm expecting it to function a lot like the previous scare zones we've seen in New York, but it is not only scare zones that have received some updates when it comes to the New York area. We actually saw our first two food booths go up for this year's event. These two food booths are down the Park Avenue area where you typically line up for Stay and Scream. I talked about it in my last construction update video. And these two food booths are themed to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. One of these booths looks like the frozen exterior of the Ghostbusters firehouse that we see in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And the other one is a deli storefront named Ivan's Deli. First of all, I want to say these look phenomenal, like they look really well themed. I really love all the detail. And speaking of detail, I love the little nod to late director Ivan Reitman, who directed the original Ghostbusters film, has sadly passed away, but his son Jason has carried on the family legacy, directing Ghostbusters Afterlife and Frozen Empire. So this being Ivan's Deli, which has been family owned and operated since 1984, just seems like a nice little touch for this food booth. We don't have menus out for Halloween Horror Nights this year, so we don't know what food is exactly going to be served at these food booths, but I'm just happy they're going all in on the Ghostbusters food. I really want to see those pumpkin donuts from 2019 come back, maybe some frozen treats to tie in with Garaka. Really, the possibilities are endless. Moving over to the San Francisco area, last week we talked about these Blumhouse logo stages that have appeared in the front and back side of the scare zone, and recently we've seen more props and theming that confirms that this is going to be the location for Enter the Blumhouse. We have this really cool set dressing that looks like the walls of a house. Really big, really detailed, provides some great hiding places for characters. We have a set of lockers with the Blissfield Beaver mascot head on the top. This is of course a nod to the film Freaky, which was featured in the horrors of Blumhouse back in 2022. So based on this, it seems like we can confirm that Millie and or 
Thor, the Blissfield Butcher from Freaky, will make an appearance in the Scare Zone. We also have a wreath of blue flowers, which are signature to the Purge franchise. And based on that, plus these barrels, which house their own little Easter eggs and secrets, we can assume that the Purge is also going to be featured in this Scare Zone. Again, not too much of a surprise. They've done Purge Scare Zones in the past. The Purge is such a popular series, probably Blumhouse's most popular franchise. So it was kind of a no-brainer that they would appear in this Scare Zone. And finally, of course, we have the unavoidable Blumhouse logo, which has appeared at the top of the giant box-shaped truss structure in the middle of the San Francisco area. Now, we still don't technically have the details for Enter the Blumhouse. They did make the announcement that it's happening. Obviously, we can tell that it's happening. We're still waiting on confirmation as to what the Scare Zone is going to look like, what properties we're going to see in it. But as you can see, the Scare Zone is pretty far along. They're putting out props that indicate what we're going to be seeing, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that announcement very, very soon. Moving over to Central Park, this is the scare zone that is the farthest along, and is pretty clearly meant to be Swamp of the Undead. Since I've talked about this scare zone, they've added tons of props. I'm just showing footage on the screen of all the little props they've added to the swamp. Reminds me a lot of what they did for Jungle of Doom last year, putting that initial foliage, initial structures, and then putting a bunch of little props here and there as we lead up into the event. And this is great. The scare zone looks beautiful. I can't wait to see it at night. Can't wait to see what that lighting package is. I don't think this scare zone is complete quite yet. I think they're going to add a little more in the next couple weeks, but this scare zone does look pretty much done. So what do y'all think about Swamp of the Undead? The scare zone looks really beautiful in my opinion. Now that's all when it comes to Halloween Hornets Orlando construction updates, but there has been another update in the parks related to Halloween Horror Nights. Ironically enough, this takes place over in Islands of Adventure in the all Hallows Eve Boutique. This is a year-round Halloween store in the Lost Continent section of the park, typically themed to traditional Halloween, but it does also get overlays for each of the seasons, and the Halloween Horror Nights overlay has gone live themed to Lil Boo. Lil Boo's Boardwalk Boutique brings together the dingy dark carnival concept they've done at Halloween Horror Nights plenty of times before, and mixes it in with the traditional Halloween feel that is signature to the All Hallows Eve store. And while this isn't on the same size and scale as the Halloween Horror Nights tribute store, there are some fun little Easter eggs in here. As soon as you walk in, you see a clown driving a bumper car. This bumper car was featured at HHN 17, the Carnival of Carnage and was most recently brought back for Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. Here's a photo from my Behind the Scream store. We see Major Sweet's hat and brand new purple coat in the store, as well as a few masks from the Sweet Revenge scare zone. We have the cat, the baby, and the clown from Sweet Revenge. Of course, Lil Boo makes an appearance here, hidden amongst all the toys in the back of the store. And another item in Lil Boo's collection is the handbook for the recently deceased, featured in Beetlejuice. Don't think this means anything about Beetlejuice coming to the event, but I think it's a fun little nod, especially with Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice coming out in just about a month. Of course, as I mentioned, Lil Boo is back, and that also means some new Lil Boo merchandise has appeared in the store. We also got some more merch featuring that sort of punky design from previous items. Overall, I really like this new store, maybe not as much as the Dr. Oddfellow overlay they had last year, but I do really like the aesthetic, like the vibe. I'm a fan of that dark carnival feel, and I can't wait to see this store full with new HHN merchandise coming in the next couple weeks. Speaking of stores, though, I do want to talk about this year's HHN. HHN Tribute Store. It's something I'm looking forward to. I'm sure it's something you all are looking forward to. And recently we got some teasers as to the potential theme for this year's Tribute Store. A couple years ago, they started teasing upcoming Tribute Stores inside of current Tribute Stores, but this time the teasers are not appearing in the Summer Tribute Store, but rather Sahara Traders, which is the gift shop for Revenge of the Mummy. Recently, in a corner of Sahara Traders, some new props have appeared that seem to be teasing what's coming to this year's HHN Tribute Store. The first one I want to talk about is this poster here that reads Wonders of the Ancient Garden at the Museum of Antiquities. Now, the Museum of Antiquities is the setting for Sahara Traders and Revenge of the Mummy at large. It ties into the ride as well, but it's more featured within the gift shop itself. And it seems like here we have this Wonders of the Ancient Garden exhibit, maybe teasing that we're going to be getting a museum-themed tribute store coming for HHN. Of course, thematically, this kind of makes sense as the Tribute Store's location is quite literally right next to Revenge of the Mummy and Sahara Traders. 
But could this also be a story connection as well? Could we be tying the story of the trivia store in with the Museum of Antiquities from Revenge of the Mummy? I think it's honestly a cool possibility. Of course, the main focus of this poster is this idol right here, which is in the shape of a bat. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but this idol does look a lot like the one we saw in the Boar Schuster section of last year's HHN tribute store. That idol was sort of a Cthulhu-shaped creature, but it was also gray, looks to be about a similar size and did have the glowing red eyes. Could they be of the same origin? Could we see that Boris Schuster story continue in this year's tribute store? Lots of questions here, but honestly my interest is piqued just from this poster alone. We also have here a newspaper clipping that reads, Upcoming exhibit sparks controversy, wonders of the ancient garden, an unnatural artifact with a mysterious origin. A recent acquisition by an anonymous benefactor has been donated to the Museum of Antiquities this weekend. A statue that bears resemblance to a bat, along with other artifacts, will be revealed at the opening night gala, a gathering of the city's most wealthy and elite philanthropists. Whispers of a curse have made their way to our ears here at the paper, which could lead to a very interesting weekend. Now, there are a bunch of interesting details on this newspaper clippings. For one, we have a picture of the Revenge of the Mummy ride facade with the Museum of Antiquities sign. This isn't tying into Revenge of the Mummy, the attraction, the story that goes on there. It's more tied into the Museum of Antiquities. We also see that this paper is dated Friday, August 2nd, which is this past Friday. And it also reads check back weekly. So I wonder if we're going to be seeing newspaper clippings come every single week, building up the story of the tribute store before it opens. Of course, the elephant in the room is that we have a museum-themed house, the Museum Deadly Exhibits, coming to the event this year. Will the Museum of International Folklore and the Rotting Stone from that haunted house make its way over here in some fashion? Interesting possibilities regardless. Now you hear me saying museum, that sounds kind of interesting. What could be on display in this museum? Well, we also have some prop boxes that have some interesting information as it pertains to HHN history. We have one box here that simply reads Fathom Core. That is the fictional organization that was seen in the 2019 house Depths of Fear. That house basically took place on an underwater expedition terrorized by mouth brooders, which are these sort of giant fish-like creatures. So I wonder if we're going to be seeing something relating to the mouth brooders, Fathom Core, or Depths of Fear within this tribute store. Maybe just a little Easter egg, but I think it's pretty interesting. However, more interesting to me is this box that reads, Ship to Museum of Antiquities from Cary, Ohio. Cary, Ohio, of course, is the most prolific fictional location in Halloween Horror Nights lore. Of course, is the home of Albert Kane, the caretaker, Meaty Meats, HR Blood and Guts, as well as the Carrie Drive-In, which is going to be featured this year in Slaughter Cinema 2. So like Fathom Core, could we be seeing something referencing Carrie, Ohio in this year's HHN Tribute Store? Only time will tell, and they like to play the long game with these Tribute Store teasers, so I'm expecting a few more to come up in the coming weeks before we get to that Tribute Store opening. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is an update regarding the Unmasking the Horror tour for this year. For those who don't know what the Unmasking the Horror Tour is, it's basically a lights on daytime tour of a select number of haunted houses at HHN. You get to learn the behind the scenes elements, get to see the sets up close, and take some pictures in certain areas of the haunted houses. They have a three house and a six house option, and recently we just got some information regarding which houses are on each tour. For the three house tour, you're going to be able to walk through Slaughter Cinema 2, the Museum Deadly Exhibits, and Triplets of Terror. And for the six house tour, you're going to be able to walk through Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America, Goblin's Feast, Major Sweets Candy Factory, Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines, and Insidious the Further. A Quiet Place is the only one of the haunted houses that's not going to be featured on any of the Unmasking the Horror tours. Typically, they do have one house that is left off of both of the tours, and it makes sense that it's a quiet place due to how experimental this house is going to be. They don't want to spoil all the secrets for you on an Unmasking the Horror tour. I've done both tours in the past. I'm always going to recommend the Unmasking the Horror tour without the Unmasking the Horror Tour, this channel would not exist. I'm honestly thinking about doing 
Resident Evil 3 house unmasking the horror tour this year. Because man, I want to see Slaughter Cinema 2 up close and personal. I want to take that trip to the Carry Drive-In. Are you planning on taking an unmasking the horror tour this year? What do you think about these lineups? I want to hear all your thoughts down below. And that's it when it comes to HHN updates. Quite a bit going on in the park right now. It is the beginning of August, so it makes sense. We are under 30 days away from the event beginning. And that's insane to me. But let me know in the comments below what excites you the most about anything I talked about in this video. If you like HHN and Universal of the past, present, and future, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It lets me know you like videos like this one and you want me to make more of them. Right now, we're just waiting on that final scare zone to be announced, and I predict that's going to happen sometime this week. We are getting closer and closer to the event, and then it's time for hype lists and stuff. But until then, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I'll, of course, see you in the next one, but until then, stay spooky and take care, everybody.